Malaria. What is malaria? Malaria is an infectious blood-borne disease caused by the pathogen Plasmodium. It kills half a million people each year and then 200 million people get infected as a result of this epidemic. The Plasmodium pathogen is becoming increasingly resistant to presently available anti-malarial drugs. Currently, there are 13,500 compounds that have been proven to be effective treatments. It is our job as scientists to alter these compounds in order to develop a cost-effective, readily soluble and metabolically stable drug. For our anti-malarial drug, we have synthesized this core molecule. It's triazoloparisin when we have used condensation and cyclization to create this molecule and we have used aromatic substitution to substitute chlorine atom with an organic molecule. And we're going to talk more about this reaction in this video. Alright, so in this next section we're going to be looking at how we synthesized our final compound. So a major process in this was conducting a nucleophilic aromatic substitution. Now that may sound like a mouthful but when we break it down what we see here is our aim is to remove this chlorine and we replace it with this phenylethanol group and why we want to do that is because this forms our final compound which is going to be our anti-malarial compound. Now let me just introduce you some of the terms we're going to be working with throughout this uh, reaction. So firstly what is a leaving group? A leaving group is just a functional group that is stable when it holds extra electrons when it's ripped from the covalent bond. So remember what a covalent bond is, that's between uh, two non-metals. So halogens such as chlorine are really good at forming these leaving groups. So next thing we need to define is what is the nucleophile in the aromatic nucleophilic substitution. So a nucleophile is simply a species that's capable of donating an electron pair. So let's talk about how this reaction works. So the first thing is we have potassium hydroxide in the mix and that is going to react with the phenyethanol and rip off this hydrogen here. And so the OH plus H just goes to water. That leaves our phenyethanol with an O minus ion, and there's a K plus there that wouldn't normally stabilize it. The second step is involving 18 crown 6, which is this guy, that's the catalyst. So the potassium plus ions, uh, they interact really favorably with this catalyst because it's got so many polar oxygens in the middle it can just fit snugly right in here. And then once it fits in with the catalyst, it's out of the reaction. That leaves this phenyethanol with an O- minus on the end in a kind of unstable state because there's no potassium to stabilize it. So what it's going to do is it's going to find this molecule and attack this chlorine. Okay, so that leaves, uh, it knocks off this chlorine in the aromatic substitution reaction and it forms this product, which is exactly what we want. So just to clarify, that is the aromatic substitution reaction because this is our aromatic. Uh, it is nucleophilic when it's got an O minus on the end because it's got, it's got the O minus, it has an extra electron that it can donate into a bond. Um, and it's going to substitute out this chlorine. So that's the aromatic nucleophilic substitution reaction. Um, so what we're up to now is we have some potassium plus in the middle of this catalyst. And we have a chloride ion that's just left and it's on its own. Final step is the potassium meets the chlorine and they bond together. They form potassium chloride and our catalyst is left on its own just as it started. So that's how we know it plays the role of a catalyst. Um, and yeah, that is our entire reaction. We formed our compound and that's everything. Now that we've developed our antimalarial compound, we can now start clinical trials. Currently there are no known side effects.